Let's have a look what is happening when the task would like to finish its job earlier and the usage of function task yield. Let's analyze the situation where the task is finishing its job before the time elapsed uh, given by the time but by the cystic. What it can do? It can go to the blocked state using already mentioned OS delay function, but in this case we need to precisely define the delay we would like to specify. And uh, in many cases it is not known. We just would like to be active in the next time slot dedicated to this task, not uh, go to the block state for a given time. So this is not the best choice. The good choice would be to move our active task somehow from running mode to the ready state. And for this we have a dedicated function, it is called OSTREET yield. Let's have a closer look how it works. OS3 yield, yield function, it is used to end the task activities once the job is done and uh, we don't want to wait for tick nor we don't want to make the next iteration of our task body function. And uh, the effect of this function is to move the active task from run mode to the ready mode and trigger the pend SV interrupt to switch the context to the next task from ready list. It makes sense if you have few tasks on the same priority level, otherwise the yielded task will be executed again as uh, the task with the highest priority. So let's analyze the situation like on below picture. We've got two tasks, task 2 and task 1, on the same priority. Task 1 is, uh, let's say, executing its code and uh, it's finishing before the tick time. And so it is calling OS Street yield. OS Street yield is uh, triggering pent SV software interrupt to switch the context from task 1 to an another one from the ready list, so in this case task 2. Task 2 starts its execution and please have a look that it's interrupted by the SysTick when the tick time elapses. And then SysTick is calling again PentSV and selecting the next task from the ready list, which is again task 1. So there is one disadvantage of this yield function. This advantage is that the next task, which would be selected by the scheduler, will have to its disposal only the remaining part of the tick time, which is not always the desired amount of time. So please remember about this. This is really important, maybe not limitation, but uh, argument to think over whether it is uh, good to call the yield function from the active task. Let's have a closer look on OS Street Yield API function step by step. So OS Street Yield function, it is coming from CMC's OS V2 and is calling task yield function from FreeRTOS API. This task yield function is uh, calling port yield, which is defined in port macro.h file. And this function triggers pent SV interrupt to request a context switch to the next task from the ready list. Below we can see the example, it is a version for IRC compiler. At the beginning we are setting the bit pent SV just to trigger the pent SV and we are using two instruction barriers to be sure that the complete setting of the bit will be done before the execution of the next instruction. So this is how it is done step by step. It is possible as well to use this function from the interrupt but in this case, instead of port yield, there would be an execution of port yield from ISR, but the effect would be exactly the same. Let's test the yield function in practice. So please come back to the previous exercise. Let's start from the Cubemix perspective or STM32 Cubemix application. Please select the FreeRTOS configuration button and please go to the tasks and queues. Within task and queues, Please unify the priority level for both of the tasks, task 1 and task 2. It can be OS priority normal value. Then please uh, generate the code and uh, come back to main.c file. Within main.c file, we will modify the body functions for both tasks. Within task 1, we will remove everything within the while for, for endless loop. We will keep only the task underscore action one and we will add OS treat yield function after it. Within start task two function, we will keep within the infinite loop only task action with argument two. 
Then let's compile the code and start a debug session. As a result, we should see the following situation. At the beginning, task 1 would be executed, so we can see the task action 1, and then it will go immediately to the ready state, giving the space for the remaining time within its uh, assigned 1 millisecond for task 2. Assuming that our MCU is really fast, we can expect that within this 1 millisecond, more than once, we can execute the task action. In such a case, we can see on the screen that there would be 1, then few times would be 2, because uh, task 2 would be executed continuously, its endless loop would be executed continuously till the end of the 1 millisecond time. And then, after it, we will see again 1, because there would be a sysTick which would call the switch of the context from task 2 to task 1. So we could see that uh, there would be much more execution, much more time dedicated for task 2 than task 1, because task 1 would resign from its uh, assigned time to task 2, as uh, it doesn't need to spend complete 1 millisecond for its operation. But of course it depends on the code which is located within the endless loop, and uh, in case uh, there is much more coding within this loop, the final effect could be different. Please check it on your side. So at the beginning we can see that task 2 is executing many 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 times and then from time to time we can see task 1. The explanation for this is the following. Within our code we have specified the time slice for each task uh, for 1 millisecond. Uh, and within this 1 millisecond the task is executing the code from this endless loop. So, in case of task 2, it will be sending uh, these two over ITM interface one by one, as fast as possible within this one millisecond. This is why we can see a lot of, uh, let's say, sign of life from task 2, and as um, task 1 is uh, sending only once the, the, its, its, uh, its data, and then it is uh, uh, going immediately to ready state, we can see from time to time only uh, the sign of life from uh, task, uh, task 1. So the effect is visible, but please remember that yield function should be used among the tasks with the same priority. So if you would like to block somehow or to finish earlier, of, uh, let's say, the, 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 the job of the task with higher priority, better use OS delay instead, which would put higher priority task to the blocked state. Thank you for watching this video. 